Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Heidemann, um, you said that there's a lot of experts going to be testifying, a lot of doctors and uh, medical students. And I have to admit, I'm going to take all of their concerns, all of their testimony with a grain of salt because my children's pediatrician has sent a letter to us last year, and I have a copy of it again this year, that ha he is in support of this bill. And we, as a family, made the choice to vaccinate our kids. But this is just giving them the option of not supporting or not vaccinating their kids. So if we have medical people on both sides, which one do you weigh difference? Right. I'm, I'm not surprised by that at all. This, they're, they're, you know, the anti-vax movement has been growing steadily um, in the past decade. Um, but we as, not myself, I'm not a doctor, but uh, you'll hear from some, uh, they have to rely on the available scientific consensus before them that's, that we rely on, the, the Centers for Disease Control, World Health Organization, the folks that actually do the research, the meta-analysis of different studies um, and rely on those best practices. So that, you know, that's where we, we stand as a health department that's trying to protect as many people as we can. We rely on that guidance. But they have studies too. So it's, it, you know, you're, you were trying to determine what is best for the state, but you have studies on both sides that are ones saying that the vaccines are safe, the vaccines are good, we need to do it for the welfare of the state. Then we have other studies that are saying studies vaccines, that the vaccines are causing issues. They're causing permanent damage to children. Studies that are, that are considered and um, by our, the World Health Organization, the CDC, the medical community, they're not, they, they didn't stumble across something new. This is, you know, as, as doctors, researchers, they're always looking for new information, and you can never make a conclusive um, recommendation. You can only do what's based in front of you. So there, there's constant um, research being done and popping up, and you'll see, if, if you look into a lot of the um, research that has been done with, uh, around vaccine uh, concerns, uh, you'll see them get redacted. Um, I mean, not redacted, re, re taken, taken back um, years later um, as new research comes available. Um, we've seen that time and time again. Um, so, you know, emerging research is constantly coming out. It should be reviewed 100%, uh, but, but we have to rely on those that are experts in this field to do that review. Any you had said that if the children were taught from young that vaccines are bad, they're going, never going to assume that they would be good for you. But wouldn't that be the reverse way also? If you are taught that vaccines are the only way to go and you're not given the information that says you have the option, you can pick and choose which vaccines. Maybe some vaccines are very good for you, like the influenza, the flu vaccine. But the HPV, as we've been hearing from testimony, could be very bad for you. So why would you not want to give that child, that student, that young adult their options, let them understand what each vaccine is about and make the determination themselves? I guess my uh, counterpoint to that is because we're speaking in hypotheticals here. Um, I believe from age 10 that I could drive a car completely safely without any consequence to anybody, yet I was prevented from doing that until I was able to get my license, and thereby I was unable to harm other people. Whether I am correct in my belief or not, I'm not sure, but I guess um, I, I have a very hard time uh, believing that... Uh, Instilling in somebody uh, the idea that something the majority of experts believe is correct can be bad. However, b instilling um, beliefs that the majority of experts believe are incorrect probably isn't good. Um, but um, I'm sorry, I get emotional about this topic for obvious reasons, and so I'm probably not uh, speaking crazy.